Welcome to another edition of the Minds on Muscle Show, hosted by your Strata family, Brandon. How you doing, pal? I'm all right, man. I'm doing okay. Living the dream, man. How you doing? I am doing great as well. It's a nice, cool September day. I'm loving the weather. This is my time. And today, we're, I think we're talking about some stuff that I know I struggled with for a long time and uh, out of fear because I thought if I was for one specific person, then I would miss out on business. Yep. Turns out the reverse is true. Turns out it really helps to have a very specific niche. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to talk about knowing your niche offer and all the benefits and the costs of not having it because I'll tell you, they are great. Yeah, I think one of the most valuable things I've seen our, our, all of our students do and we do here at Strata is doubling down on knowing exactly what we do and who we do it for. Because if you can figure that out, it makes everything else that you're gonna do from the stories that you tell, the sales process you use, the marketing content, really everything in between becomes defined based off of that. So this is kind of an extension of the client avatar conversation. But what we need to know is that there are some very core things that people desire and want. And if we can make our offer focus on that and really connect with people and get people excited about what we do, the conversion of getting people in the door, calling us, reaching out to us, or even answering a cold outreach message completely changes. The niche offer that you have and your client avatar, foundational. And there's really no way of getting around it because everything that you do from how you communicate, how you write your copy, the type of content that you create, the kind of consultations and assessments and education based closes that you run, so to speak, are all based off of who's in front of you. And if you don't have your niche carved out, and there are many different ways to go about it and many different sub niches you can have off of a main niche, but if you don't have that carved out, everything else from there is gonna get lost because if you're for everyone, you're for no one, Every time you speak, no one's gonna be hearing you because you're not speaking to anyone in particular. One of the great copywriters of our time, Jim Edwards says, when I'm writing copy and when I'm trying to communicate to someone, I'm trying to communicate literally to one person. He has an image of who that person is, who they are, how they're thinking, what their pains are, whether physical or emotional, and how what he creates and what his products are, are gonna help solve the problems for that person. So if you don't have your niche right now, it's like you're treading water when you could be doing the front crawl to wherever you wanna go. It's pivotal. Don't speak to everyone, speak to someone. Jim Edwards' book, uh, Copywriting Secrets, is one of the most powerful books that myself, Glenn, Taylor, and all of our students have read because at the end of the day, it helps you define your wording, your sales copy, and make sure you're speaking to somebody. I mean, really quick, Cole's notes, if you need a rundown from defining your client avatar, is go into Google and put in some very key demographics. Literally Google in the gender, the person, the condition, the things they want, how much money they make, and you'll see a bunch of random images of random people pop up. And then once you see someone that looks like your client avatar, ah, take that picture, print it, put it on your wall, and make sure that all of your communication is geared towards them. I kind of got a funny little niche offer for Fitness Pro Mentors I think is hilarious because all of our program stuff is around helping in-person PTs 2-3x their business. So one of the things I say as part of our offer is the anti-online training online training program <laughs> because it's extremely niche, extremely specific, but it gets people thinking, Oh, and it gets, it really just helps to stand out. So Glenn, let's talk a little bit more about this. So you have got some things you said, that what is the cost of someone not having a niche offer? Well, I mean, I think we, we've kind of talked about it uh, already. And the cost is that you're not going to find the people that you're looking for. Um, most people that are coming into personal training, uh, personal trainers, businesses are usually referrals and hot ones, right? These people have been pre-vetted because they're already a close friend of the client that's referring them to you. The client that you have that's talking to the prospects probably already knows a lot about your price, a lot about what you do, how you help people, you know, your client's experience. They're already sold 95% of the way. They just have to meet you. And I wanna say it's up to you not to screw it up, but in a lot of cases, it's up to you not to screw it up, right? So <laughs> if you don't have a niche though, the cost is that your message is always gonna fall on deaf ears. And for me at least, it's frustrating because you feel like you're creating a lot of great content. You know you've got some technical skills that can really help some people, whether it's lose body fat, gain muscle, help get out of pain and discomfort, whatever it is that you do, but you can't seem to find any of the people to work with you outside of these warm referral sources. Now, 
Here's the thing about the referral well. The referral well is finite and it runs dry and it can run dry quick. In our program here, Fitness Pro Mentors, we have all these different strategies that you can use to grow your business. And one of them is asking for referrals. And you might have, if you're a personal trainer, let's say 15 clients that account for 25 to 30 hours a week. But if you ask all those 15 people and most of them say, I can't think of anyone and you only get one or two referrals, I mean, that's a wrap for the next three or four months or a year until you can ask again because you ask every month. I mean, that gets redundant. People don't like that. It feels icky. It feels like you're pestering them versus if you know your niche and you know how to create content and you've got a way to nurture people, get in front of more people like on Facebook or do webinars or seminars and really help a specific sub subset of people with a very specific problem the way you talk is going to resonate so well with them. So the cost legitimately of not knowing your niche is literally, it's like, it's like being in a car, like a hot rod car. You're a hot rod personal trainer. You got all the knowledge, you got all the skills, but it's like putting your foot down on the gas and being in neutral. You're going nowhere fast with all that effort. But if you find your niche and you start carving it out, it's like putting that car in first gear and you carve it out some more and then to talk to them, it's like putting that car in second gear. And then eventually you get to fifth gear where you're cruising and those referrals are coming in. You're finding cold leads that are converting to warm leads down the line that are converting to clients because you double down on one specific niche. I know that was a lot, Brandon, but I felt like I had to go off. I felt like I had to rant. Honestly, so Estrada, we work at Jane 65, and Jane 65 is someone we call an active seeker. She's someone who is an educated individual. She's been su successful in her career. She is now retired, maybe has kids, probably has grandkids, and she wants to keep busy and keep active with her incredible lifestyle. Jane 65 was so busy in her world that she's got aches and pains in her body, and these aches and pains in her body are slowing her down from doing what she loves picking up her grandkids, staying active, dragon boat racing, whatever it may be. Now, Jane 65 is someone who's an active seeker. She's actively seeking resolution to her problems. So she's hired all the people, the massage therapists, the chiropractors, the physiotherapists, and all the amazing people that you've heard of before to help her feel better and have these joint problems, hopefully not slow her down so much. But she's frustrated. She's annoyed because she's been working with these people, has spent lots of money, has spent many years trying to resolve that back problem so she can keep doing what she loves. And all those fixes are short term. They give her a bit of, re bit of relief and never give her the long term sustainable results. So what we do here at Strata is we help someone like Jane 65 move better, feel better and exercise pain free with an en engineered exercise approach so she can move better and feel better. Ultimately, our extremely short offer is we create a short term exercise program to help her move better and feel better in 12 weeks so she feels good enough to keep doing what she loves. And then we create an amazing long term program, whether it's here, whether it's at home, whether it's part of our membership, whatever it is, so she knows exactly what exercise strategy she should be doing right now to help manage these problems. We want all of our clients here to know that it's not about just passive therapies and external stimulus. It comes down to how you remodel and change your body using exercise. And it's one of the most amazing things about exercise. As you all know, if you're here, the stronger you can get, the better you can feel, the more you can quote unquote reprogram your body. Not exactly, but fun to say. So your body is closer to symmetrical and feeling better. You can get some amazing results. And all of our clients, Jane 65s, we actually literally have a Jane who is 65 years old that come here, uh, they're literally, that's what they're looking for. And so it's great because if we know that, if you look at our marketing, and I would encourage you if you're listening to this, go to stratinternalperformance.com and watch all the champion videos on the front page of the website. And what you'll see is there are six or seven, and all of which are demographically speaking, incredibly different people. Retired NHL player, we have a South Asian woman, we have a young mom, we've got a gentleman who just wants to keep playing hockey. The, the, all the gamuts there of different demographics, visually speaking, gender, age, all that. But their psychographics are exactly the same. And their messaging is exactly the same. They were struggling with how they're moving. They weren't happy with how they're feeling. They tried everything, didn't work. Started coming here, amazing changes pretty quickly. Now the exercise approach here helps them keep them that way. And it's great because we have all these people who are saying things that sound completely insane that we're helping them with. It sounds like we're doing <clears throat> physical therapy, which we're not. But as soon as you see all the video overlay we put over top of it, it becomes exponentially clear that we're using resistance exercise to make all these amazing changes happen. So I love it. And this is what's great is that since I focused on the Jane 65 market here, we've all focused on the Jane 65 market. Our market growth and how we stand out in our community has been exponential and it's fantastic. It's almost like we're scaling with culture, Brandon. 
Scaling with Culture. By the way, if you missed that episode, you should definitely go back up in the guide section or through the queue here and watch that because that is, and listen to that because that's a real good one. So interestingly enough, Brennan, uh, whether he meant to or not, kind of started transitioning us to our next kind of topic in this, which is different kinds of niches. So Brandon gave a really, if you, and if you didn't catch it, Brandon gave a very, like, very, I guess, very dense overview of who our Jane 65 is. It covered a lot of different bases about how she's thinking about things, what she's been through, what she wants to do, and all that kind of stuff. That is our niche, and still pretty in-depth, and that's not even everything, right? Brandon kind of gave you the Coles Notes version. But inside of that niche, there are also sub-niches and micro-niches. Right, so there's other layers to that. Even though that was super dense, there's other layers. So to give you an example, we might have like a type of Jane 65 that comes through the door that fits all of that, but this particular version of Jane 65 is struggling with lower back pain. And that's not an uncommon person that walks through our doors here, somebody struggling with lower back pain. So some of the content that we produce and we create here at Strata, whether it's in our Facebook group or on our personal pages on our Instagram, a lot of that has to do with Jane 65 sub-niche back pain. And there could be a sub-niche for knee pain or hip replacement or X, Y, Z, right? So there's other deeper layers you can go into. Once you start getting a whole bunch of people in your world and more eyes seeing you, you can then start doubling down on things that are even more specific. And then, here's the beauty of it, you can tag those people who you know are working through that in your group in those videos. And that's what I did today. I actually, last week in our Facebook group, I said, hey, we're looking to make some more guides. I try to make a new guide every, every month on a different body part and how you can exercise and train it, even if you've got pain and discomfort, to so start improving the way you feel and help move out of pain and exercise. And I said, hey, what do you want to see next month? And we had knee for one, neck for one, da, 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 da. But a whole bunch of people said neck. And they said, okay, who are these people that want a neck? I saw five or six different names. Like, okay, great, I got it. I had some time this morning, 15 minutes, and that's all it took. I said, I'm gonna go and do a live training, impromptu, about rethinking neck pain and discomfort. And what did I do? I just spoke for 10 or 15 minutes about, hey, here's different parts of your anatomy, here's why your neck might get tight, here's some stuff you could do at home right now to help with that created that live video, tagged all these different leads in there, knowing that they are people in the sub-niche. People who want to move and exercise pain-free, fall in the same kind of psychographics as our Jane 65, but are dealing with sub-niche neck pain. And you can even go deeper than that. You go a micro-niche, which is neck pain that's stopping me from working at my job. Neck pain that's stopping me from playing with my grandkids. Neck pain that's stopping me from da 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 you get to decide. And the great thing is, is that once you know your niche and you've got these people in your world, you can have them there, understand them better by speaking, interacting with them, and then create stuff that they want, moving them from colder to warmer to scorching hot. So that couple months down the road, this person who might have just joined our Facebook group or your Facebook group just because you posted a link in another random group is now knocking on your saying, hey, I really think I could benefit from this. How do we get the ball rolling? Brilliant. It I works. mean, listen, I mean, how simple, Glenn, the suggestion he's making, like what he did was he's talking to people, right? We have an offer. Our offer is getting people excited to come into our group. Once they join the group, Glenn has a conversation with them, chats with them, genuinely talks to them, learns more about them, becomes their friend because he, they know, like, and trust him. And they see his face and his authority all over the group. They share some information with him. I suffer from occipital headaches and he goes, ah, great. We don't have a guide on that. Guess what I'm going to create? And now all of a sudden you get this incredible exponential growth in your back end with the cold to warm lead content that you use to help value piece people along so they become clients. You have to listen to these people. And this is what I love about this is that we're working with Jane 65s. Like Glenn said, people come in with hip replacements, cardiovascular disease, occipital headaches, plantar fasciitis, that all these different conditions are stopping people from doing things that they love. How easy is it to try and create some content, a niche offer <clears throat> that speaks to each one of those people with the overarching umbrella theme that you help people move better and feel better so they can get back to doing what they love. I absolutely love that, man. That's great. Way to go. Yeah, thank you. I love it. It's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun too because, I mean, the way it's not word is fun, but doing it and knowing that this is for specific people makes me feel really good. Right? I don't want to just create content just to try to get more business, even though that's a huge return on the investment. But knowing that we're creating content for people that need it, not just to do it for the sake of doing it, is very fulfilling. Yeah. 
And, and you need to have that in your career if you're going to be an exercise professional. And please go back and watch the podcast creation episode and the live streaming episode. Uh, watch it in the Fitness Pro Mentors Facebook group as well as listen to it on Spotify and wherever where podcasts are because all that content creation, those systems that we use to exponentially and efficiently create systems. I mean, sorry, video like Glenn does at home and I do here and allows us to record the mentorship and all of our study groups. Super simple to do. A little bit of an investment up front, but it helps you exponentially create things. So Glenn can do exactly what he did. Wake up in the morning, see something, 7.30 in the morning, go, I'm going to record a video. Record, guide done, education value piece, amazing. I want to speak to one thing very quickly on this offer thing. And it actually is something that happened to me by accident, and I think it's really kind of fun. There's no such thing as I alluded to at the beginning, and like Glenn's saying, as too niche of an offer. And so, as many of you will know, I'm a passionate musician. I'm someone that was my first real love, and my, I was considering it as my first career path. Glad I didn't do that formally. But as I was working here through Strata, I remember that at the very beginning, the first year, there was a Wednesday I was working on some admin stuff, and a friend of mine posted on Facebook, my back hurts from playing drums, screw the drums, I'm never going to play drums again because my back hurts so much from the drums. And I was just like, frustrated and irritated immediately because I'm someone that helps people move better and feel better. And this particular gentleman was the same age as me. And so he's a pretty young person stopping playing drums. And he was actually like my key influence when I was in uh, elementary school to actually start playing drums. He was really good. And I was like, I got to keep up with this guy. And now he's stopping because of back pain. So I got angry. And what I did was I recorded a video spent 15 minutes recorded on my MacBook Pro through the little camera on the front, super sketchy. And I recorded a video basically for YouTube talking about drum throne mechanics and talking about biomechanics for drummers. Literally as an educational resource to, and I shared it to my buddy and I put it on YouTube. That video now has over 100,000 views on YouTube. And because of that extremely niche biomechanics for drummer, I wrote for an international magazine and I've got a book deal that's coming just for drums which right now for biomechanics, which is completely insane. None of that was the intention. The original intention was I was taking two different things, biomechanics and drums, trying to mix them together so I could educate people. So that way of the three main value things that people hire people for, health, wealth, and status, right? This is more about the health. There are a lot of drummers, musicians that want to keep playing because they love it and they don't believe their health should stop them from playing drums. Understandable. But from that crazy YouTube video, which was an emotional response for me to try and help a friend, turned into this thing where now there's notoriety for me in this community as drummers, which is completely insane, helping them with biomechanics. And so I'm not telling you, well, you can if you want to go start working with the musician crowd. I'll tell you what, not a lot of income opportunity there, but really interesting to see that there's a niche for that. And from what I've done, a lot of people now have tried to go on and copy some of those things, which is fine by me because it just means there's more health information in that world. And so for you, this is what's really great is if you're working with the weight loss demographic, which is a demographic we don't often talk too much about because we are not weight loss demographic people, I would say, uh, there's huge emotional connections there, huge opportunities and huge opportunity for very micro niches to try and help people. Uh, there's someone that I've been watching that's in our fitness pro mentors group and he's actively doing long distance running and has gone on this incredible weight loss journey and now is a long distance runner. You could easily create a micro niche of weight loss for like running, sorry, weight loss with running or something like that. And then make all of your content just around that if you really wanted to. Ultimately, this is what CrossFit is. It's a group exercise platform that utilizes barbells as its primary platform, Olympic lifts. Talk about micro niche, but that turns into all this other crazy stuff. Anyway, be as specific as you want. There's an opportunity there. Lean into the niche. And I think this is something that's gonna come up for some people. Fear of turning away business or fear of not getting as many clients because you're not for everyone. I want to be very clear because I've had this conversation with some students in our, in our mentorship program, which is just because you market to a certain niche doesn't mean you have to turn away any other kind of business. I market to people who are older, who want to move an exercise pain-free and are frustrated by a way, the way it makes them feel and how they have less quality of life because of it. And it's really upsetting and frustrating them and for many different reasons, all the stuff that Brandon had said before. But if I have somebody who is a young athlete and they want to work with me to help improve the function of their body so they can pitch faster. This is a true story uh, of a client I'm working with right now. I'm not going to say no to that 
because I still have the tools to help this person move along in the right way. And in some cases, I'm more qualified than other strength and conditioning coaches because I understand how to work with people who are extremely sensitive. Because the ability to work with people who are extremely sensitive means you have to understand how all these things fit together really, really well. And if you know how to do that, well, I mean, it's much easier now to start working with people who are less sensitive, who you can really, really push the, um, push the needle with or, or put, the gas to the, uh, put the pedal to the metal, push the gas down. What I'm trying to say is, is that just because you're marketing to a specific niche or sub-niche or micro-niche doesn't mean you have to turn away business from other people. I mean, if you get really, really good at what it is that you do, people who you work with are going to refer other people to you for stuff that you don't even do. They're going to have such a great experience with you and they're going to love working with you so much that the second their friend says fat loss, even if you do, you know, move better and exercise pain-free, they're still going to refer you to, that per to you because they trust you. And so you don't have to be concerned or worried about not getting the business that you want. I would honestly be more worried and concerned about not getting business because you don't have a niche. So Glenn, I want to honestly. ask you something if you don't mind. So since you've started here, mm -hmm. you've gone through a pretty massive evolution oh, yeah. in your marketing, your advertising, and how you promote yourself um, from where you were very generalist mm -hmm. and I would say like a much more of a personal brand and now working on more communicating to people one-on-one -on -one and having a much more uh, defined niche. Mm -hmm. What has that transition been like for you personally? At the beginning, it's rough because it's like you have to, it feels like you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. It feels like you're really doing everything different and everything's new. Um, but then as you go through it, and it's a process for sure, don't get me wrong, but as you go through it, you learn how much easier and simpler it is because you're now trying to take your message and, f and everything you do and focus in one area versus spreading it thin, right? It's like trying to focus on, like if you are trying to, it sounds such a bizarre analogy, if you're trying to raid a castle and there was a wall there, you wouldn't try to have, you know, your 500 men all around the castle walls all trying to go through different parts. You would have a, str a strategic attack to go around one part of the wall that you know is going to be the weakest so that you can bust through and then take over that castle. Now, that sounds bizarre, but the point I'm trying to make is that focused effort in the right areas is what gives you the return on, on investment that you're looking for. So by focusing on having my marketing towards the Jane 65, focusing on how I'm gonna communicate with people, focusing on how I deliver my education, the concepts that I share with these people, um, it has really helped me turn the, turn the corner. And I'm never, and I'm not 100% all the time, and no one is, right? Because people, as you said to me, Brandon, people are, people are difficult. People are difficult. It's, it's, it's hard to communicate with people sometimes. It's hard to read someone's mind, and you're not going to be for everyone, even if it feels sometimes really, really warm. But ultimately, at the end of the day, my experience, even though it was rough to begin with, for the first month or two after that, so much easier. I mean, I think when I started here pre-pandemic, I don't think I, I think I had maybe had like two clients of my own that I brought here, and I think that was maybe like a couple hundred dollars a week. And then I think by the end of like the first two months, I was close to working what, like two and a half days a week, close to like taking home like me almost two grand, I think, yeah. every two weeks. So like that's almost like, I don't know, they're like four or $500 days, right? So. Yeah. Which is uh, perfect for most trainers. Yeah, I mean, that's, it was great, right? And, and now that we're, things are starting to ramp up and things are starting to open back up here, those numbers are, are crawling up. I think I'm close to the same at the same amount of hours, so which is fantastic. But yeah, I mean, at first, like, listen, let's be honest. Uh, I'll say this so I'm not ranting too much because I know I can be redundant. Changing the way you do things is challenging. It's not easy because it's uncomfortable and it's new and you're going to be in that comfortable zone. But once you do it, you're going to look back and be like, why did I not do this five years earlier? It's really one of those moments. At least it was for me. Using the battle analogy, I mean, how many times do people go to war, they retreat to rally and then go back and collect mm -hmm. their morale and they go back. And I mean, right. and that's the idea is that if your current game plan is not working and you want to get to where you want to get faster, please let us know because we'd love to help you. Oh, yeah. We're doing it with a bunch of people right now, quite a few actually, and it's going really, really well. We got one guy who's making enough money on his own that he quit his own job, preparing to open his own studio. Other people are hiring people, building their own communication and business processes. It's just absolutely fantastic. So you can get there faster. If you want to help siege the castle and get over that, flimsy wall in one seamless go. Yeah, what is it? Twin Towers, I think it is. Lord of the Rings, They're where all the orcs come together and pull the brick. Anyway, whatever, nerdy. So there's one last thing I want to talk about, and then um, I think that's where I'm, wanna, I'm ready to put a pin in it. And it's actually a big one for me because <clears throat> it's something that I made a lot of mistakes with, and I know that on my team here, we've all made mistakes with this because openly, we've spent a lot of time studying a ton 
Sam Trotta said I say openly all the time. And now I catch myself when I say openly. I'm like, yeah. I say openly a lot. Right? All of our team here has made this exact same mistake. We have spent a lot of time studying science and biomechanics and all the advanced, gooky, fun, awesome stuff. I taught RTS. I'm an educator for exercise pro ed. I got my own PAP science based course. We all do study groups here frequently and are talking about this stuff every single day. And we love exercise machines. We love all the stuff. Listen, at the end of the day, you have to be careful of not jamming the science you love down your prospects throats. Because one of the things that we accidentally do is we end up in our marketing talking a ton about what we love, like, and we're passionate about right now. But it literally has nothing to do with what cold and warm prospects need to hear to convert to become clients. I've seen a lot of trainers, and I've talked to them about this, posting exercise machines, Kaiser machines, Cybex machines, Medics machines, and going, here's our cool machine. This is our rotary torso machine. It does X, Y, and Z, right? They just do the features and benefits things that we talked about in the sales copy. They talk about the features and benefits, and they never talk about what it means for the prospect, which you can do machine things, but people don't look at a Medex machine and go, wow, that's a really cool looking machine. They look at a Medex machine and they see this big, boxy, gray framed or weird colored frame. They get overwhelmed by it. They don't even like it because it's actually kind of ugly, even though it's awesome. And they just flick past it on Instagram or they scroll past it on Facebook or they don't even look at it on your website because they look for people like them because people like me go to places like this and the messaging has to resonate with them. Resistance curves, strength profiles, torque, pulleys, all cool stuff literally doesn't matter when a cold or warm prospect, they'll just see it and they go, oh, Glenn knows this stuff, cool. And that's about it. It doesn't help people convert. So I'll throw this out there because as many of you know, I'm a gigantic exercise science nerd. Glenn is, Taylor is, Chris is, we all are here at Strata. All of our students are, you have to be careful of not smashing that down people's throats. It needs to be about what they need to hear to connect with their values because they're gonna have health, wealth or status, emotional concerns, the concern about the pleasures or the pains they're going to get from hiring you for their product. And ultimately you need to make sure you connect with them because if you're marketing, your messaging, your cold outreach, the stuff you're saying when you're on a sales call, the sales call, if your client doesn't become a client or they don't stick around for a long time or they connect with you, but they don't actually move forward into becoming a sales conversation, there was something that was missed in the process to help connect with them. And if that happens, there's your bottleneck. But the thing is, Glenn's always saying, what do we got to do? What's the KPI? We got to... T- I'm sorry, what? We got to track. Oh, we got to track. track. Sorry. We got to track. I tried to. Sorry, sorry I tried to set it up. It's we okay. got to track because if you're tracking these things, then you'll actually figure out exactly where your bottlenecks are and figure that out. But in most cases, I would say trainers struggle with two gigantic things, knowing exactly what kind of content they're putting out there to get the lead generation of people in the door. And second, keeping people in their world and having a high lifetime value. Trainers are really, really not good and don't have the skills for retention, nor is it taught very often. And trainers are not taught lead generation skills to bring people into their world. So we want to help you with both of those things. But ultimately, I will say that both of those things, how nerdy you are, doesn't matter. It comes down to the story and the emotional needs of the client and how you're fulfilling those with your exercise process. Totally agree, Brandon. I don't have much else to say on niches other than if you don't have a niche right now, pick one. Find client, look at your clients you have right now, take stock of who they are, see what commonalities there are. Also take in mind your preferences, carve something out. And if you've got a niche, carve it out more and consider your micro and sub niches. That's what I would leave on. Oh my goodness, how could I forget? The last thing I want to say is, Brandon, what is your pick of the week? Ooh, so I'm actually going to steal a pick of the week that Glenn said months ago, but I'm going to regurgitate it and just talk about my experience. And so <clears throat> I've been using Ecamm Live uh, for all of the Apple streaming content. And honestly, the 1080p that we get from this, uh, the cleanness of it, uh, this computer sometimes lags a little bit, which we'll be fixing that real soon. But honestly, it's amazing for Apple. It, the customizability of it is fantastic. But that's not my pick of the week. Um, I'm interviewing Jason Stella this Friday, and then I got Tom Purvis coming up again. And I got a lot of people who are not Mac users their PC users. And so, so I can maintain that high quality content. Um, my pick of the week is StreamYard, which is an online streaming platform. Um, it was the only option I could find that was relatively affordable that allowed me to record in 1080p and have the customizability to have lots of people in there. And it's going to allow me to have multi-group powwows, which I'm going to do, if you're listening to this at this point, I'm going to have actually Michelle, Johnny, and some of the other PHP crew, like of a whole group powwow for a Friday, which is going to be fun. So my pick of the week is StreamYard. It's an online platform. There's a very inexpensive option, a slightly more expensive option monthly, so that way you can get lots of quality, lots of guests on, and record podcasts and live streams super seamlessly and go everywhere. So I'm going to pick 
StreamYard. Glenn, what's your pick of the week? Oh my God, can I say one thing on StreamYard real <clears throat> quick? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, StreamYard hosts off of their servers and not your own. So if you feel like you're going to be limited by computing power to have all those other people come in and having to do things off your computer, kind of like how Brandon just said that with ours right now, StreamYard actually makes it a lot easier because it's, if I'm not mistaken, everything's run through their servers, which is fantastic. My pick of, this, uh, of the week this week is gonna be the uncomfortable zone. I want you to imagine three concentric circles, kind of like a bullseye. In the middle, there's your comfort zone. The next concentric circle out is gonna be your uncomfortable zone. And then the zone after that is your panic zone. People, if you wanna grow and you want to improve yourself, no matter what it, you're, it is that you're doing, you wanna be dancing in the pan, not the panic zone, my goodness. Don't go in the panic zone. You want to be dancing in the uncomfortable zone. If you're getting overwhelmed and there's way too much stuff going on and you're panicking, you're stressed out and you can't think, you're not going to be learning. It's going to be less than ideal. You want to bite off the right amount you can chew, which is going to be in that comfortable zone. A little bit stressful here and there. You make, it makes you just a little bit antsy when you do stuff, but you're still able to take action if it's keeping you up at night and you can't sleep and you're thinking about it so much and you're not really moving forward with it and you're overthinking the process, you're trying to get through it, you're in the panic zone. Take a step back, reevaluate where you are, get to that uncomfortable spot because that's where the growth is going to happen, that's where the magic is going to happen and you want to try to visit that spot a little bit every day. For me, that uncomfortable zone is reaching out to people that I don't know and messaging them out on Facebook right now. A month ago, it was just posting in a Facebook group, right? There are ways in which you move yourself forward and it's by constantly flirting in that uncomfortable zone with new things that you're doing. Once you feel good about them and they feel more comfortable, you dive into something new that's in your uncomfortable zone. Again, avoid that panic zone because you're panicking. You're not going to grow. You're going to stagnate. You're going to get frustrated. And that's not any way to live your life. Everyone, this is another fantastic episode of the Fitness Pro Mentors Podcast. We are the Minds on Muscle show. We go live every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, almost every single Tuesday with a live stream. So if you have any questions or, or feedback, please message us live. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to answer questions on the fly. Um, but please, if you're enjoying this, give us a five-star rating on Spotify, Podcast, or anywhere else. But Glenn, that was a lot of fun. Thanks so uh, much, man. I love talking about this stuff. This is a great episode, everyone. Thank you for so much for listening. I love it, Brandon. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone.